As the old saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, meaning that, all things considered, it is ultimately up to audiences to discern what art has merit. And yet the history of art is one in which the value of that which portrays truth and beauty has been, bit by bit, wrestled away from audiences in favor of an elite class. No, no, dear viewer, you are too unwashed and rough around the edges to know good art from bad. Why, I bet you don't even have a degree. Here, let me, the sniveling intellectual, tell you what is what. And the hilarious side effect this creates is twofold. First, you have those glorious instances in which audiences love and lavish praise on something they weren't supposed to. But you also have instances when something is hailed as a glowing masterpiece by cosmopolitan circles, only for it to be met with indifference by audiences. But never fear, you card-carrying members of the artistic aristocracy. If something is completely ignored by us commoners despite your glowing praise and mountains of awards, just wait a few decades and call it an underappreciated masterpiece. Such is the case with Glengarry Glen Ross, a 1992 film about real estate salesmen carried by an all-star cast including Al Pacino, Kevin Spacey, Alec Baldwin, Jack Lemmon, Ed Harris. Holy shit, when Alan fucking Arkin is bringing up the rear of your ensemble, you know the studio pulled out all the stops to make sure this thing shined. But the problem with GGGR is that it's all flash with little to no substance, which is why movie audiences gave it a collective Meh. If you've only ever watched a YouTube clip or two of this movie, then I have some good news for you, because there is literally nothing else in its one hour, 40 minute runtime that you missed. In this scene, Jack Lemmon begs Kevin Spacey to give him some of the good leads. Kevin Spacey firmly says no. Then this happens 50 more times, yielding the exact same results. Hey, come on, just let me get some of the good leads. No. Now, hey, hold on now. Let me get some of the good leads. No. Now, let me just talk to you for a second. Let me get some of those good leads. No. Then there's Ed Harris and Alan Arkin. Harris thinks everything is bullshit, and Arkin is a bit of a pushover who goes along with whatever everyone else is saying. This is bullshit. It is. It's bullshit. Again, this exchange happens over and over. All I'm saying is this is bullshit. Yep, I agree. It's bullshit. Then periodically Al Pacino pops up to break the monotony and say something interesting, before announcing that he'll be at the restaurant so we can get back to characters repeating their characterization. But if you've seen any one scene from this movie, it's probably the famous one where Alec Baldwin berates the salesman for being losers before leaving the movie so we can get back to the other characters verbally repeating the exact same thing over and over again. And that's it. That's the entire movie. But wait, no. This is a deep film that offers a borderline nihilistic critique of the world of sales. These are men desperately clinging to warped ideas of masculinity and bravado who don't produce anything, grow anything, build anything. They are essentially worthless to the modern world, and are forced to cling to the idea that their value as men derives from their ability to sell. Baldwin's character literally refers to sales as the man's game. Can't play in the man's game. Pacino refers to sales as Men who are going out there to try to earn a living, you fairy. All very riveting stuff that's only about 50 years too late. Death of a Salesman, written in 1949, similarly explores sales as a vessel for fulfilling these ideals. Similarly refers to them as being a vessel for masculinity. Similarly ends in the shattering of a pathetic character's delusions of grandeur, and depicts an almost nihilistic worldview for the lives of men with no actual purpose. But the problem with this worldview is that, aside from the fact that audiences aren't quite as keen as critics and journalists to hear about how awful the world around them is, it simply does not reflect reality. Reality that has always been, generally speaking, what is reflected back to us in art that the beholder treasures. Even in fantasy and science fiction, we see our anxieties and questions reflected back at us. But in Glengarry Glen Ross, the only thing there is made up bullshit. You see, I once took part in The Man's Game. I got a job in sales, and as embarrassing as it is to admit, I was suckered. For months, I would get up, go to an office, and try and mostly fail to sell. There was lots of chest puffing, bragging, demeaning, masculinity challenging, and what made it hilarious was that essentially no one in the entire office could sell a thing. Everyone there who was successful was so because of connections they already had when they walked in the door. If you came in and knew a bunch of people, you'd succeed. If you didn't, you wouldn't. One time I convinced a veterinary office with 30 employees to let me present to the whole staff. So I grabbed my manager, the one who swore up and down day after day that he could sell anything to anyone. And we bought the office lunch while they heard our pitch. And when it was over, not a single person bought a thing. I will never forget the drive back as he kept saying to himself, over and over, never had that happen before. 
Never had that happen before. Now, you may hear all this and think that the world I'm describing isn't unlike Glengarry Glen Ross, but I've left out something important. Fridays. Because on Friday, every single Friday, our day started with a motivational meeting. And every single meeting started the exact same way, with the office manager making everyone sit down and watch a movie clip. Yes, the office manager played this clip every single week, and honestly any chance he could. Because in the case of Glen Gary Glen Ross, it is not art that imitates life, it is art that life imitates. The allure of sales captures many a young man looking for direction in life. And whenever I happen upon someone who stumbled into this world, they all have the same story. That somewhere along the line, their manager played this clip to the staff. So not only does Glengarry Glen Ross not reflect reality, it managed to make reality worse for its very existence. 